on, go on. Is that your shout? Well, what is this I was thinking about? I'm in for it now and it's no use bilking. Oh, aye, the milking. Owl Antony's milking. I never thought on for the wise or the hows, but I was always terrible fond of cows. Now, aren't they innocent things, them bases? And haven't they got our innocent faces? A strugan day your legs that lazy way. Or a stannin, as if they meant to pray. They're that solemn and loving and study and wise, and the butter melting in their big eyes. Hey, what do you think about it, John? Is it the stuff they're feeding on? The clover and meadow grass and rushes, and them going picking among the bushes and sniffing the dew when it's fresh and fine. The sweetest brew of God's own wine. And the smell of the harps gets into their sowls and works and works and rowls and rowls till it tightens their tits and traps their muzzle. Well, it's no use of talking. It's a regular puzzle. But you'll notice the very people that's got to attend to the lack as generally very easy men. Our old Anthony knew about them, Pat. Aldeny, Ayrshire and all to that, and breeding and rearing and profit and loss. Oh, the clever old chap old Anthony was. More by token, that's the foe. Him and me had our first war. You see, I was sitting there one night when who should come in but owl Tommy Tight. Tight he was by name and by nature. A dirty old herpacrit of a creature with a mouth that shut with a snick and a snap, tight for sure like the devil's own trap. And his hair brushed up behind and before, straight like the bristles that's on a boa. Well, that man was thin. I never saw thinner. A lean, old, hungry, mangy sinner. And he'd sit and he'd talk. Well, the way he'd talk, and he'd groan in his innards, but an eye like a hawk, and cunning written all over his face, and wasn't it him that owned the place? Well, there they were, talking and talking away about carrots and termits and oats and hay and stock and lark and barrel. Bless you, the big words they had was enough to distress ye with their pipes in each other's faces, smoking. And me, looking and longing, and longing and looking, looking for Betsy's little signs. The way them pretty creatures find to talk without talking is really grand. A tap of the foot, a twitch of the hand, a heist of the neck, a heave of the breast, a stoop like a bird upon his nest. A look at father, a look at mother, a one knee swinging over the other, a looking lower and a looking higher, a long, long straight look into the fire, a look of joy and a look of pain. But bless you, you understand what I mean. So on they talked till all the fun in her darling little face begun to work and I couldn't hold it in and I laughed and I laughed like anything. My goodness, the mad old Anthony got, with his eyes so wide and his, his cheeks as red and hot as a coal, and the other fella was turning green and turning yellow, and the old woman bucked up as proud as you please. But old Anthony spoke, and says he, he says, it's most unfortunate. I hope you'll, I mean, it's most disrespectable. I hopes, Mr. Tight, as you'll excuse... And so he went on with his parley voos. Just a young man from the shore, says he, as drops in in the Averin for company. Our humble neighbours don't know better. You see, Mr Tight, I knew his father. Well, I choked that down. But I says to myself, pretending to stare at the plates on the shelf, you got me, old man, but I'll owe you one for that before the stakes is drawn. But it's my belief that from that day, he never liked me anyway. But about the milking? All right, all right. 
I'm nearly as bad as old Tommy Tight, spinning round and round and round and never a knowing where am I bound. Well, mostly every evening, you see, I was up at the milking with Betsy Lee. For when she was milking, she was always singing. I don't know what was it. Maybe the ringing of the milk coming tearing into the can with a swish and a swelch and a tantaran, a making what the lawyer gent was calling a sort of a compliment. But the look of a cow is enough to do it, and her breath and her neck and the way she will slew it, as if she was saying, the patient she stood, milk away, it's doing me good. <laughs> and the sun going down and the moon coming up, and maybe you're taking a little sup, and the steam of the hay, and your forehead pressing again her round side. But for all, it's a blessing when they're nice and quiet, for there's some of them rough and kicky and pushy and bowled enough. Well, winter come, and then the cows was going a milking in the house. And if you want peace and quietness, as in a cow house, you'll get it the best. For the place is so warm, and their breath is so sweet, and the nice straw bedding about their feet, and hardly any light at all, but just a dip stuck onto the wall. And them, yucked in the dark, as quiet as ghosts, and a feeling for each other's noses. Oh, bless me, sometimes you'd hardly be knowing it was them, except for their chowing and blowing. Oh, many a time I felt quite queer, to see them standing so orderly there. Is it the Lord that makes them so still? Oh, I like them creatures terrible. Aye, aye, the sea for the legs of us. It's God's own work, though treacherous. But for peace and rest and that, you see, among the cows is the place for me. <laughs>